Hello everyone, my name is Jun. I'm from Progate. And we recently had an education summit in India for schools. And you know, we, we had a great speakers, including the principals from famous schools and also the Ministry of Education. And we will cover the topics such as NEP and digital education from the perspective of principals and also the, the innovation of the of Ministry of Education. So you will see both perspectives and the Education Summit is also very interactive. So you will see, you know, great interaction between speakers and participants as well. Hope you enjoy and stay tuned. Okay, hi everyone. A very good evening to everyone who is joining us today. So I can see a lot of you uh, like uh, joining us today. So can you say hi on the chats and a bit about yourself so that we can know you? Hi. So uh, for all the participants who are joining in today, uh, I hope I am audible to you all. Hi, yes. Hi, Ms. Sangeeta. Okay, I can see people. Okay, Samuel, Mr. Murthy, Mr. Khan. Okay, great, great. Thank you so much for this. So uh, thank you everyone for joining with us today. So to begin with, I would like all of you to share a bit about yourself on the chat so that you know we can join, we can understand who all have joined us today. And uh, let me just share my screen quickly with everyone. Okay, so is my screen visible? Yes, okay, great. Thank you. So welcome to Progate Education Summit for schools today. Uh, and uh, I hope all of you are excited for this because we are going to talk about digital education coding and a lot of things which will be uh, really helpful for you all to uh, get started with this journey. So uh, welcoming all of you for the same. So to begin with, uh, my name is Ankita and I am the India Community Manager at Prugate, a computer science graduate and uh, uh, also helping students across India to get started with their journey. Today, I really warm, uh, with warm regards, I would like to welcome each of the participants who have joined with us today on a Saturday evening to uh, take out some time to understand about uh, the digital education. Why we are doing this today is because, uh, you know, uh, we know that since 2020, the digital education uh, was something which is very, you know, uh, performing really well for many teachers, principals, directors from different schools. And there was a sudden shift back in 2020. And uh, how this digital education is evolving uh, in these two years, has evolved in these two years. Uh, and uh, there's also announcement of the new, edu uh, new education policy. So there are many things which have been covered throughout these two years and this which will be covering in the coming, which will be coming up in the next days also. So to keep a light on that, we have invited our three speakers uh, panelists for today to actually share their views as a person uh, about their experience so far uh, in this field, in this education field, so that uh, you all can learn and uh, we all can understand how we can go ahead with the same. So a bit about Prugate for the ones who are joining us for the first time. Uh, Prugate is an online coding education from Japan. Uh, built for absolute beginners, uh, we actually, uh, there are around 2 million learners in 100 plus countries who are learning on Prugate. So if you want to know more about Prugate, we will be sharing a bit about it in the end also. But uh, let's get back to the session today, uh, the summit today. Now, introducing our panel host for today, uh, he is Mr. Kenya Yoshino, uh, the India Strategy Manager at Prugate. So currently responsible for uh, strategy and business development for Prugate India operations. And he's also very experienced faculty in leadership development and cross cultural management. So uh, today he will be actually hosting our panelists who will be, uh, we will be, you know, uh, one by one, we will be asking few questions from them and we will be hearing their views and about their experience so far and what they think about the future. 
So next is introducing our panelists. Uh, let me introduce you to Dr. Anshu Arora, who is the principal of Amity International School. Uh, she is a CBSC rewardee and principal of Amity School in Gurgaon and has over 27 years of teaching and administrative experience in prestigious institutions across India. So uh, she is our first panelist. Let's let's give applause for her to join us for this. Uh, Thank summit. you, Ankita, for a very kind and very sweet introduction. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anshu. So let me introduce you to the next panelist of our uh, summit today, Ms. Kavita Sangvi. So uh, she is the principal of Chhatrabuj Narsi Memorial School, and she is an educationist uh, with experience in leading schools, top 50 global uh, teacher award also she has got, and she has worked in, as a trainer, as a teacher, as an ambassador in different fields. So uh, I would like to welcome her also for this summit today. Ms. Kavita Sangvi, so let's much. clap and welcome Thank them. You so much. Warm welcome. Thank you. Great. And our third panelist for today is Mr. Abhishek Ranjan. He is the Innovation Officer at Ministry of Education, Government of India. So by interest, he's a journalist and a researcher because he's an Innovation Officer that goes with his profession only. But he's also working uh, for the educational reform in India since last eight years. So let me uh, let's welcome Mr. Abhishek Ranjan also. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so, so much. We all are here today. I think we all have our speakers. We have the host. So I hope all of you are excited for this and uh, keep your questions coming in. We have our Prugate team members also, Mr. Shun Uno and Mr. Hush Mishra on this call today, who will be actually there with you uh, throughout, the uh, throughout the summit. And uh, we would like you to take the best of it from today's uh, summit. And let's get started, everyone. Over to you, Yushima san Yes, uh, thank you, Ankita. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kenny Yoshino, and I'll be the moderator for this uh, panel discussion today. So thank you very much for joining us and having uh, to, uh, uh, and thank you very much, panelists uh, also. So we are very pleased to welcome Dr. Ansha Aurora, Ms. Kavita Sangvi, and Mr. Abhishek Ranjan today. So before we go into the topic, uh, I would like to ask each one of the panelists to introduce briefly about themselves. So uh, Ms. Kavita, can I ask you to introduce yourself first? Yeah, hi. So I'm uh, basically a physics teacher. I had a uh, school, I've been heading school uh, since uh, I've been a teacher head for past 10, 15 years in leadership positions. And um, I'm a teacher trainer and I love blogging. <laughs> you love blogging, great, right, right, thank you. All right, then uh, Dr. Anshu, could I ask to have a brief self-introduction from you as well? Yeah, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me on in the summit. Thank I am you. an educationist at heart. So I have been in this industry for something like 29 years. I have taught computers at different grades. Uh, I've also done my hotel management. I have written books. I have developed an app for children for enhancing their learning capacity. And I have been closely associated with CBSC for writing books and manuals. I love children mm -hmm. and I'm a lifelong learner. Thank you. Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you. And Mr. Abhishek, can I have a self introduction from you as well? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm extremely happy to see uh, Dr. Anshu, Dr. Kav Ms. Kamita here in, in this meet. So, uh, by education, I'm a lawyer. I also did masters in sociology and mass communication, but uh, I really love you know since last uh, since school days I always have a passion to work for this school education especially for the education, and so uh, during my college I started working with some organizations and just after completion of my education uh, I had uh, I had received one prestigious fellowship called Gandhi Fellowship, and there I had worked in Rajasthan. Uh, one of the state in India, uh, especially in very remote area called Churu. And there I had started my journey in school education where I used to work with five school principal and uh, especially on the leadership components, especially in India usually, uh, today I am an assistant teacher and just because of my experience I'm promoting as a principal and head teacher. So, so I, I was working with the leadership component there and then I'd also work on intrinsic motivation uh, related project uh, in some 
uh, northern part of India uh, for almost three years. Then I, I was associated with Niti Aayog project called Aspirational District Program, and there I had worked with eight aspirational districts. Uh, these districts are you no, know, they are on uh, you know in SDG parameters. They are not up to the mark. So I was working there, and especially in the education domain all. And uh, since last almost uh, one year, I'm working with Ministry of Education. I'm more passionate to see some tangible change, especially in the rural and tribal area. And that is why I have spent almost eight years of my life in rural and typical tribal districts. So that, that is my short introduction. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you everyone for joining us again. And it's really a pleasure to have you all in the Progate Education Summit. So for the next 45 to 50 minutes, uh, I'll be talking about, we'll be talking about the learning outcomes amid the pandemic and the future of digital learning and programming education. So uh, we'd like to take some questions also during the, the panel discussion as well, but uh, I would like to save the time for Q&A at the very end. Mm -hmm. So, but please feel free to uh, put your questions on the chat as well, anytime. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first question on digital education. So as you will, we all know, you know, since the spread of the pandemic back in 2020, uh, many of us had to go to the digital learning and uh, online education after school closures. And so first we would like to hear uh, how you handle the situation at your school. So what were the challenges and uh, how did you tackle them? So uh, may I start with uh, Ms. Kavita? So thank you so much. So this, I mean, there were many challenges, first of all, because it just happened overnight that we shifted from off time and we suddenly realized that we had no connection with each other. So, uh, and finally the online platform, because we have a school we're catering to more than 3000 students. So an online platform for everybody to log on to. So we obviously experimented with many platforms and then came up to uh, MS Teams. And therefore there was a lot of research. There was a lot of connection that had to happen with different networks outside our uh, school. And there was a lot of training requirement required for us because none of us were savvy with uh, these platforms and how to use it to its maximum uh, capacity and potential. So and we also had to adapt ourselves because we, I mean, we started and we were always offline. So to go to online, we had to actually adapt ourselves. So the adapt uh, adapting, adapting also was something, a challenge for us. And um, how did we tackle them? We tackled them basically understanding that we need to have, uh, we were to first accept that we were not digitally savvy and we needed to study and be a lifelong learner. And therefore we made sure that we collaborated with people who were good with it and learned and experimented, explored and regular meetings and hand holding. So if a physics teacher would hold a hand of a history teacher, if she was not confident enough, a Hindi teacher would work with some other teacher. And we actually had peer learning and showing the lessons to each other and asking them, you know, tell us where we're going wrong. So this kind of, you know, Feedback, peer feedback and collaboration is what actually pulled us through. Wonderful. So uh, it, it's very interesting that the first step was to accept the fact that you, you are not uh, maybe uh, internet or tech savvy. So accepting the reality as was the first step to tackle the challenges. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Anshu, could I hear from, could we hear from you? Yeah, I think I would resonate a lot with what Ms. Kavita just said. I think certainly it was uh, overnight, you know, none of us had ever dreamt or even thought about it. Like I've told you a long stint that I have an education field, but work from home is something which has never existed for schools. Work from home was work after school writing your mails after school, preparing a lesson after school. But so to say that to sit down and to really work and deliver a lesson from home was really very tough. You know, another very interesting thing I want to tell you here is since I uh, have been into computers, I taught computers and I was the computer faculty for 15 years. Computer industries have been flowing in. There have been so many companies who've come in with their softwares and they had always wanted schools to integrate, you know, and teachers were taught computers. But it is the chalk and talk, which I think was always very, very close to a teacher's heart. Something that she completely kind of understood, completely kind of was comfortable with. 
but the same teachers rose to this challenge. You know, it's like they believe when you burn your bridges behind and you know you have nowhere to go, you have no choice but to go in that single direction. I think the fact that there was no plan B, you know, a teacher could not still choose, okay, that there is something online, I could still do chalk and talk. That thing vanished completely, that chalk and talk was not to be there. Campuses for the very first time internationally were locked. I don't think I remember a time when schools were actually closed across anywhere. And teachers knew they had to do it. I think that itself, adversity being the mother of all inventions, I think that played a huge role. So the first thing we did was we have Amitranet. So that's a very good portal which connects us with all our parents and all our children. So luckily, we never lost this connect. We started with very simple assignments. Then we graduated to giving children short videos, doing a few flip lessons, giving them URLs. And from there on, we went to Google Hangouts, exploring a bit with Zoom, and then finally settling with Teams as a platform for teaching learning. Yes, I mean, it has been endless training. There has been a lot of handholding. Everyone has learned, you know. When it started, I also did not know much about it. Today, I think all my teachers can teach anyone. So everyone has learned the proficiency. Everyone has kind of swam through these tough waters and they've all become victorious. Wonderful. You know, when, when you said uh, that, that there was uh, no way, no plan B, there's no alternative plan and you have to burn the bridges behind you. And that sounds a lot of pressure, like uh, a lot of uh, stress to the teachers, but you, you, I could tell that you are enjoying that process. You know, all, all the teachers, are, well, maybe they, because they had no choice, but it, it sounds like you guys are enjoying that process of overcoming the challenges. I think mothers, right. teachers mm -hmm. are like second mothers, the kind mm -hmm. of love they have for their students. I think that pushes them to do a lot and even go beyond their set boundaries. So that's what they really did in these tough times. Great, great. All right. Uh, Mr. Abhishek, also, we would like to ask from you. So how, how do you think India is working on, on providing digital education, after, especially after the pandemic? Thank you. Thank you for this question. So as uh, Dr. Anshu and Ms. Kavita has said, you know, they have shared their own first version as a teacher, as a principal, as an administrator. But if you see the situation at holistic way, especially in terms of uh, just imagine uh, how they were facing the issues like, you know, uh, teachers were not tech savvy, you can say some in some manner, they were not used to take lessons or classes through online mode earlier, or maybe they were used to, they are, they were familiar with the platform, but uh, the classes were offline mode and uh, still they were facing some issues. Just imagine the situation of other rest of the country where uh, children were facing, you know, they, they, uh, three types of problems uh, were there. The first problem is they were not having any proper digital device. So the second problem, if, if you are having a digital device, there is no network available there. If you are having the network, you are not having the internet facilities. Although India is having very cheap data, but still every student can't afford, you know, more than, uh, you know, if you are accessing the online education, it, it always needs uh, some you know additional data it requires so that is why uh, so many initiatives taken by the government just to ensure that every and each children can you know can get connected during this pandemic time with the learning and for this uh, for just to ensure that learning is you know lockdown is there but learning should not stop so government has initiated some uh, programs and I'm sharing few of them uh, government has just initiated just soon after the lockdown uh, on 17th May 2020, uh, 2020, uh, PME Vidya uh, initiative started just to, uh, you know, uh, where all efforts unified, where all digital and online or on air education, uh, where, you know, uh, government has started focusing on it just to just to ensure that every children are getting some uh, education. Uh, government has also started focusing on the platform like Diksha, 
And if, if you see the data, especially during the pandemic, uh, recently government has released one data on 25th November. So you will see 402 crores learning sessions are there on the Diksha portal. So in, especially in the rural areas, uh, some teachers have started Mohalla classes in community classes. They had started engaging with the children just with the help of the Diksha portal, where you can easily find uh, content, especially uh, teachers, government, so, uh, government uh, resource center. They have started creating online contents. They were not prepared earlier, but they had started creating so many e contents. And right, right now, approximately. Uh, 2 million, more than 2 million uh, e-contents are there on the Diksha portal. On the other hand, government has started TV channels, uh, Swayam Prabha TV channels. Right now, recently, just two days ago, government has announced in the budget uh, that uh, right now 200 dedicated channels will be there. So one class, one channel. So through that Swayam Prabha TV channel, government started just to engaging with the children who are not having proper access of the digital education. And this, this is also a kind of uh, efforts taken just to ensure that uh, each student has something, they are somehow connected with the education, although everyone is not having the access of the TV, television, but still uh, started this initiative. And uh, you, if you see the viewership, almost 74 million viewership, uh, you, you can see the, especially on the Swayam Prabha. So again, uh, government has also started connecting through the radio, community radio, CBSC podcast like Sikshavani. So again, so many, almost 132 All India radio stations, they had started uh, broadcasting the content related with uh, school children. And all these initiatives are, you know, uh, just, uh, just to ensure that some, somehow uh, children, although uh, you can't compare all these things, the offline classes, but these things were taken just to ensure that uh, we, we are providing some sort of education. Uh, if you see the, you know, uh, at, uh, earlier said by the uh, Dr. Anshu, that not only in private schools, but government was also worried how we can ensure the proper training to the teachers. So during this pandemic time, India has trained almost 3 million elementary school teachers digital. And uh, all this initiative due to, you know, uh, because of NISTA training. So NISTA is the world largest training, especially going on in India right now. And uh, not only uh, India is trying to train their teachers, especially on the online platform, uh, but also trying to give them a kind of holistic approach, how they can uh, handle this kind of situations. Uh, if you see the trend, especially in the last uh, uh, five to six years, we are also trying to convert the, the you know offline especially uh, the blackboard should be converted into digital board so operation digital board has also started and you will see some impacts in uh, upcoming future so uh, these things are are going on although uh, on a personal note i, I still admit that uh, in fact in economic survey the recently released economic survey india has admitted that we are still facing some issues especially to ensure that each and every marginalized community students, they are getting some access of education. We had literally lost two years of education. So we can't say everything is good, but it's still uh, government is trying hard. In fact, so many organizations, they are also trying to reach out to them. So it's a kind of collective efforts, not only private schools, but uh, not only government school, but uh, private school are also struggling in this pandemic time. But yes, uh, I can say proudly that uh, we are trying to mitigate the shortcomings. We are trying to face the, those challenges. And we are also trying to find the alternative solutions. So, so this is the brief answer I can share. Yeah. Wonderful, Mr. Abhishek. Thank you so much. You know, it's, it's great, really great to hear how much initiative the government of India is taking for tackle this problem. And like, as you mentioned, Diksha has 2 million teaching content. That's amazing. And uh, you mentioned Swaraya Prabhaha TV, 74 million uh, viewers. So that number is just astonishing. So really a wonderful thing and giving the, really the education opportunity for all the children, all the students in India. So I think that's key, really wonderful. This budget mm -hmm. system, uh, government has also started a called digital university. 
so very soon in fact the top 100 universities who are having a kind of you know government has recognized them as a uh, top uh, in uh, nirf ranking so they are going to produce quality digital content uh, so that in upcoming times we can provide because uh, there is one issue and i think it's a relevant issue i think uh, kavita ji and anshu ji also uh, uh, will you know uh, agree with me that ensuring that all the digital contents are child friendly they are having they are you know handling the psychological and pedagogical part is very bit challenging for uh, for the country especially country like india where there is no regulation on the online contents so recently government was you know forced to uh, just uh, they, you know they had we had issued the notification that how you can ensure that all the learning contents are having some sort of you know they are ensuring that learning contents are uh, as per the children needs and they are not misleading and all, all these things so so th these challenges are there and uh, you you can see the so many initiatives taken by the ncrt level and and the uh, the institutions like uh, they like the cbsc and the uh, other departments yes right right yeah i i totally agree with you i as a parent myself i have some concerns still about digital education compared to the physical education done in classrooms so um i'm sure you know there are some concerns you know the voice of concern shared with you from the parents and you know uh society in general so dr anchu like uh can you share like some of the voices that you've been hearing and you know how you handle those or how you respond to those uh, concerns at your school yeah thank you for this question i think it's a very important point that we all delve into you know mr abhishek just mentioned that digital content we don't know how child friendly it is i would like to ask the whole world how much did we know about the physical content when there were classrooms happening and the doors were closed and they were given to the teachers even then there were challenges i did not know whether the psychology of each and every child is looked into i was not too sure whether you know gender biases are not creeping into the classrooms i did not know whether international spectrum has been kept in mind while teaching was going on so these challenges have existed but we haven't really paid focus i would rather say because things are online they are open and not just the principal the director the advisors the parents all teachers you know everyone is on the platform so the teacher cannot just do something in her own isolated island she has become now open the moment something inappropriate is said it gets voiced and i think that bit of transparency which has come has helped everyone somewhere there have been situations where i had to intervene i got certain complaints from parents but, but you know when openly i sat with my teacher with a recording of the classroom we paused the classes at the right point and you know then i would talk to her and tell her you know what probably was going wrong i think that openness and that transparency has helped all of us so they be they became more conscious of the whole thing the awareness grew more i would say the uh, stakeholders took a very very active role for the very first time trust me while have had complaints i have never heard more praises you know in so many years more than two decades i have never heard parents talk so high of a school or teachers it's you know when they sit in the drawing room and then they watch oh my god how is this teacher handling 40 and the kind of patience she is showing the kind of ppts and videos she is bringing you know whether it is quizzes or peer deck and name it like there are so many tools being used it's the child is not just looking at the screen he is literally interacting with the screen he is playing with his fellow mates his answers are being compared there is collaborative learning you know campuses across the country across the world children are meeting on one platform so all that is seen by the parents for the very first time because they had the time on hand and it has been i would say a fair game a fair play of things but we've learned a lot so it's been very very nice journey wow wow that's amazing i was actually expecting you know to hear some of the negative comments or concerns but you're just mentioned they're all more positive than negative so that's they really are, encouraging you know, we also did certain endeavors you know after like 6 months i just realized that the child is also getting too homebound 
you know mm-hmm. all homes parents also had enough problems lot of people got laid off lot of mothers lost jobs mothers were in lot of pressure because you know just to get your kids ready send them to school meet them at 3 is very very different from sitting with a child 24/7 so we started a mentor mentee program each and every class teacher would then call 3 to 4 kids and understand their psyche so we had to go out of our comfort zone it was not just that we could teach and we could just get away with it we had to understand what was playing on the mind of the child we had to reach it from the child's point of view and at the same time we did enough orientations for parents where parents came in big numbers collective groups we did ptms where parents came one on one with one teacher one parent kind of a scenario so we kept everyone engaged fully involved and responsible in this that's amazing um yeah i would i was kind of imagining like the some of like the evaluation or attendance or like the mental state of students might be um be might be a bit challenging for them um miss kavita so how about your case like um uh, were you hearing some of the concerns from the parents or or is it the same situation like you having hearing more like mm-hmm. the positive comments so definitely i would agree with dr anshu that there was a lot of positive mm-hmm. comment from the teachers but yes there was certain uh, negative uh, impacts also so let's be uh, to be very honest we had seen a digital addiction by the students because then they got used to the um, you know laptops and their ipads and everything and from this classes they went on to gaming so we have had seen students seeing addicted to games so uh, pubg became a very a hot thing for the students and all that so a lot of digital addiction is something that we have seen uh when i speak to the counselors that we had across for digital all this thing was going on we have noticed that uh, cyber crimes have become much more uh, in this entire two years i've had my own credit card being hacked uh, once or twice so definitely we have seen all these kind of impact in our students also being experiencing it whether it could be a cyber bullying happening across something that they have written out here on the media and it's now for everybody to see so this kind of incidents have taken place another thing that we also uh, observed is because you've been home so much on the screen you have seen a social isolation so the virtual medium has become a medium for them to interact with everybody and that has taken them away from the physical interaction so uh, right now what you're seeing across is just the top part but you see when you see somebody face to face the body language speaks much more volumes than the what the other thing can be spoken about so the non verbal was not very clearly observant in the virtual medium so social isolation was also happening across uh, you saw social behavior also changing across of students today when they have come back physically to us after a long period of time especially the primary they have come back after 18 months to us we noticed that maybe academically they were doing very well but when it comes to confidence when it comes to coming on the stage and talking there has been certain sta- uh, places where they have lost that because they have not come physically in front of the entire stage and spoken to 100 people in front of them so uh, that certain aspects you are seeing and how are we working over it well with this we have started regular assemblies where we make sure that there's a theme for example we speak of cyber bullying we bring in experts to talk to them we really get in our own pool of uh, parents to talk to them and our parents have become a great source as dr anshu has told us that it is really the stakeholders are taking much more interest this time and now that they've come back to school we are focusing much more on this physical activities right right yeah thank you for sharing that situation so cyber bullying is definitely an issue um in in here in japan as well and uh so one of the things that you tackle to those issues would be to invite an expert and have them uh speak about how to resolve the, the kind of issues especially for teachers and in intervening and um you know how to how to stop them in doing that uh in a cold situation but as dr anshu mentioned earlier it's more transparent i think that's a very positive thing about uh doing the online education all these you know sessions or classes can be seen by their parents as well so i think that's a positive part as well so i think it's a balance and of course there's negative things for anything and we just probably have to tackle them one by one All right thank you thank you for sharing that thoughts now i would like to kind of move on to the next subject about uh uh the nep so 
as we all know that NAP has been revised after uh, 34 years since 1986. So uh, I, I think many of you are facing a lot of changes and uh, there's many initiatives uh, taken by the government of India as well. And I would like to hear, uh, so maybe let's start with uh, Dr. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Abhishek. Um, how do you think India is planning to see these changes and pre preparing itself to achieve the goal of NEP? Thank you. So, so if you see the document of the uh, national education policy, uh, it is, you know, uh, recently uh, we were the part of uh, Republic Day uh, uh, tableau. So there, there in, in that, Tableau, we, we showcased how, uh, you know, India is having a rich legacy and also trying to uh, work, trying to reform the education system where you can find a kind of 21st century skills, uh, you know, requirements are fulfilled. So, so Veda to Metaverse. So this was the Tableau uh, name. So if you see the doc, uh, document, national education policy document, so India is a very diverse country and uh, you can't imagine, uh, you know, and in, in India in, uh, as per constitution, so state and central government is having some say for the education. If you see the whole structure, so it is, it's like a decentralized system. In fact, you will find so many independent boards, independent uh, uh, authority who are handling the whole education system. So there is no centralized system, okay? And, in the decentralized manner, uh, if you want to see the uh, India as a, as a country who is always used to known as a uh, world teacher, Vishwa Guru. So this document is in that direction. So I'm just sharing a few things, few, few things where uh, I think you will also uh, resonate the changes. The first thing is focusing on the early childhood education. Earlier, I am also a pass out from typical government school. So we used to, you know, uh, till the age of uh, six or seven, we always we don't used to uh, go to the any schools or we we are not we were not receiving any sort of education. So right, but, but we all know that the focusing on the uh, especially education in early age, it's it's a kind of uh, maybe it it will be a very long term impact. So India is first time focusing on the early childhood education and it will, it will have a long-term impact. You will see the impact in the upcoming years. The second thing is focusing on the teachers. So still, uh, I, I can say, although it's not a platform to share these things, but still in, in some, some parts of the country or in some part of the you know, uh, society, in fact, you can say, the teaching role is a kind of last option. If you are not doing anything, I can become a teacher. I'm not saying it's a, like a gender train, but how we can, you know, uh, just convert this profession as a noble profession where everyone is uh, having a good attention there and they are having a kind of orientation. Ki, I want to become a teacher and want to, you know, change the system. So, so this national education policy is focusing on four years degree courses and here are well-trained and well-focused person will be a part of the education system as a teacher. So focusing on the teacher's training, focusing on the mindset behind the becoming the teachers is also a, a kind of changes you will see. The third and most important thing is focusing on the, uh, you know, not only accepting the digital reality, but also trying to uh, make create a kind of balance between offline and online education. As I said earlier that, uh, right now, India is, you know, planning to convert its almost one million uh, schools into a digital school. So, how uh, the government is planning? So, government is pumping almost ten thousand crores just to convert the uh, under operation digital board, and uh, it has a aim to achieve it by twenty twenty two itself. But uh, so, how they can achieve the digital board? Uh, operation digital board and how it will have an impact on the uh, national education policy. So if, if you see the document, you will everywhere find that we should create a kind of digital repository, we should provide some some access to the digital education, we should uh, we should try to get some, you know, uh, where 
you you are getting some information from the you are also learning from the foreign universities or foreign uh, countries or something where where you know find some meaningful contents so you will see lots of changes there two two more things uh, in the national education policy where you will see uh, it's a kind of uh, a, a transformational change that as prime minister said uh, in the uh, one in one conference that india is having a kind of a good uh, not only having a very spiritual capabilities but also india is having a capabilities to convert this country uh, along with the power of this nation especially the innovative minds the innovative idea so focusing on the innovation focusing on on, on the entrepreneurship focusing on the startup ecosystem so th these things are the first time added in the national education policy if you see the earlier policy you will find some missing links there so first time india has acknowledged that these things are uh, important 20 focusing on the 21st century skills uh, we all know that degree is important but skills like critical thinking leadership communication these are very very important things so first time national education policy is acknowledging that these are the important part and we should include it in our education system so these things i think uh, we will see a very positive change in upcoming years and uh, uh, it has a a kind of uh, it is you know a kind of combined aspiration of all 130 uh, you know billion country man so so i think uh, you will see the good impact in upcoming years yes mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Th thank you so much. Uh, you have really given us a, a very good overview of the National Education Policy 2020 and what, what, what the government is aiming for. Um, so, uh, Dr. Anshu, uh, would you like to share, you know, the uh, impact of, of the NEP 2020 at your school? So it has been giving a lot of uh, direction and changes uh, for all the schools to implement. But what, what are the major impacts at your school? Yeah, certainly. But before there, I would just like to correct one phrase. You know, I have sure. heard this debate across for the last one year or more that for the mm -hmm. very first time we are doing this. I really do not agree to that. I don't think we are doing it for the first time. Our country is the country where actually gurukuls emerged. Our country is the country which had in, you know, university level education when the whole world was actually struggling with basic schools. You know, a, a son of a king was actually staying in a, a small, you can say, ashram or a very, very simple place. And for him, learning skills was as important as learning warfare and learning Shastra. So we have always had this. It's just because this country was invaded for a, by many and for many, many years, like almost like 200 years plus, we did not have Indian rule. So, you know, whatever was there in the system actually got crushed, got destroyed, and we are now rebuilding it. And that's why a lot of people feel it is new. It is not new. That is who we were. You know, the system of one cut fits all was not really the Indian system. It was not the modern system. You know, when I went to school, I was taught how to write an application should be, I beg to state, I need one day leave. And you know, it's suddenly that five, six years down the line and no one said a word. I wrote that, I was taught that. And then suddenly certain years went by and one English teacher, you know, she just said, why do you need to beg? If you want to leave, you could just ask for it. So there were things which were kind of just enforced in the system. We did not know it very well. So I think uh, we are now redoing the whole thing. We are uh, revisiting uh, the entire thing. The basic change, which I look at it is that the child can now study a combination of subjects. This is also something, let me tell you, I started in my school way before NEP. A humanity student could do biology in my campus. So they were in, we had tweaked the system here and there. If the child went for a national game, we actually gave him two days, uh, you know, uh, credit in some other exam. So we were doing it at our own level. We did not have a very structured way of doing it. But now the mandate is 
let's keep everything together. So we have the national, you can say the NEP supporting what we wanted to do. A child has to study many, many subjects. You can't really, you know, cut the slice and say your science, commerce, humanities. I have studied science at different stage. I did, I did my hotel management, so I did commerce. I went on to mass comm, so it was arts. But what makes a person complete is actually a mix of all of it. So I think that's the biggest change which is coming. Thank you. I see, I see. So it's more integrated and maybe it's more has the perspective of liberal arts perspective in the education. So building the whole hum human as a not as a skill set or mindset only, but as a as a human being. Yes, right. totally. great, great. Thank you. And, and Dr. Anju, would you like to also add, uh, share with us about the impact of N NEP now uh, with this uh, new revision? Uh, came into place after 34 years. So at uh, your school. Yeah. I would not say that it has, you know, kind of changed everything across board. A mm -hmm. few minor changes are coming in. And I mm -hmm. think CBSC is one board and education system in India has forever been very progressive. You know, whether it is a book that we teach or a subject that we teach, it has always gone in for revision year after year. So that's the system we've always followed. Now the little pattern which will change is the pre-primary education, you know, which was kind of done without too much of government interference. You could just do your play school anywhere you felt like. All those things are, you know, changing. They have to now become a little more uh, systematic. They're all coming under a radar. They will be looked into very carefully. And then, like I said, subject choices in grade nine, it's not going to be clear streams. It's going to be a lot of combination subjects. That's one change. Digitalization and emphasis on skills, on training. Again, when if you ask me uh, that, am I training teachers more just because NEP is coming in? I would say no. I think training has been a rigorous part of a lot of good institutions in this country. Had we not trained and had we not gone into in-service training, the country would have not stood where it is today. So that was all there. You can say that it is now a cross board. You know, when we talk about a big country like India, uh, size is one, population is second. And poverty being another big factor, which, you know, we cannot... Uh, rule that out when we talk about India together. So there have been islands of excellence. There have been certain areas of mediocrity. There have been certain areas which needed a lot of attention. So when anything about the country is said, it cannot be generalized. It cannot be made believe like one statement. You will have certain institutes and certain institutions, colleges, which will be at par with international standards. And some which are growing, which are soon, you know, absorbing what is important at international forums and learning. So there is a huge spectrum, but uh, we are definitely on the path of growth. Right. I, I totally agree. It's, it's uh, one of the direction that government is uh, initiating, but uh, I'm sure the good education has been there in India for a very, very long time. And it's currently now integrating and maybe showing the standard, but uh, also there, there's always a excellence of education quality always been in place in India. Um, Ms. Kavita, I would like to ask you as well. So NEP 2020, however, has uh, made a programming education mandatory from class six. And uh, I, I think you, in your school, you have been implementing coding class from before. But uh, has there any changes or impacts at your school of NEP 2020? So uh, as Dr. Anshu has said that when you have speak of good schools, they're anyway doing a lot of things uh, and much more than what the NEP has spoken about. Uh, I think what I really like about the NEP is that you have a pride of being Indian. I think somewhere that is getting reinforced across the country, the being pride of being Indian, that is something where coding is concerned. We started coding in 2019 itself across in our school. We, the first year we started from fifth to eighth standard. And then, then uh, when we saw the impact of the students, we saw the computational skills really being enhanced in the students. Then we started from first to eighth standard from 2020. 
and it has been going on very well in our school. So we have students, uh, both the uh, computer and mathematics teachers in our school. We have taken up the entire onus of doing coding with our students. So we have them doing Sudoku. We have them doing a lot of mathematical games and a lot of that uh, computers language also. And we have an online gaming, uh, online platform also for coding where students go on to it and they solve um, a lot of, um, they go from level to level. So definitely over the period of years when you've taken feedback, we've noticed students telling us we enjoy doing this more than the other subjects. Also, they've been able to um, add on or maybe able to connect this kind of computational skills building, the skill that they've built to other subjects also. So they've been doing an application of this concept and that has really been wonderful. So yes, coding has really, really worked very well with us since 2019. And apart from that, where the NEP is concerned, as I said, as Dr. Anshu has already spoken about, yes, the assessment pattern is gonna come in, uh, which is gonna be a little different where we already have begun uh, in a national system of having more MCQs and reducing the stress on the students. And the vocational education was already there, but now it's going to get more pronounced. And another thing is I really like about it is 10 days bagless days. So this bagless days is what something I'm looking forward to more because um, that is something for us. That, and that's gonna make people think about like, yeah, uh, what can you bring in to ensure that students don't get uh, bags to school? So these are certain things that we are working on um, uh, in schools. But apart from that, obviously as I said, good schools are already doing quite a lot. Right. Yes, I'm sure, you know, good schools are already doing a lot. Yes, I cannot agree more. Um, in terms of uh, programming education, uh, Dr. Anshu, how about your school? So have you been implementing uh, the coding class at your school? But uh, uh, would you like to share like some of the characteristics uh, of the coding classes at your school? Yeah, I think IT is, you know, a very important integral part of teaching. So right from nursery class, basically we start the IT training. When it comes to coding, it is probably for grade seven, eight upwards. And children have been doing a whole amount of, you know, coding. Children have developed their own apps. Children make their own websites. They have come up with very good and functional programs even for the school. Uh, you know, in my previous campus, just to give you an example, we did online voting. And the software for the online voting was completely developed by, you know, a batch of students. So they got the entire program ready for us. We did not have to make any ballot paper or any ballot box. Only the computer was kept and the children monitored all the elections and they were able to do it. So, you know, you have to raise the bar. When it comes to kids, they are capable of doing a lot. But I think as mentors, we have to think, you know, what is that we want from them? Is it really going to excite them? Is it, you know, going to be beneficial for them in the long run? So they have done a lot. If you look at class 11, 12, I have taught computer science and I have taught IP. Those are two subjects that are taught in 11, 12. Children make really wonderful programs, quizzes, games, or you can say, you know, uh, various programs even used in banks or hospitals or railway stations. Those kind of simple packages and programs have been developed by children for a very, very long time. What is now added to it is industry experience. Children now get a chance and opportunity to test their program with other entrepreneurs. We just recently did the DST program where the science projects were taken up with DST and other, you know, you can say business houses. And if they would fund our kids, then they children are actually now making business uh, future ideas. That's amazing. That's amazing. So they are learning more practical skills and uh, a place where they can try their ideas on a real world situation, real world problems. Wow, uh, Mr. Abhishek, uh, you know, India is is really focusing on creating an innovation culture as you mentioned a little bit earlier as well. Uh, and uh, can you explain those initiatives like uh, in brief about what you recommend uh, the schools to take? Um, like I understand there are many government initiatives to enhance uh, innovative cultures in schools. Or would you like to share a bit about that? Yes. So India currently is aspiring to become a 5 trillion economy, okay? 
and as prime minister is especially focusing on the innovation and how we can create a kind of ecosystem where india can become a hub of startup hub of innovation hub of ideas so if you see uh, some some uh, i'm just sharing few uh, you know uh, just the indicators where you can see the rise of india on innovation uh, and how we are trying to you know inculcate all these things in the uh, school and higher education institutions so the first thing is uh, right now as per national education policy india is currently working on the framing new national curriculum framework ncf and uh, this ncf will have a five important areas the first is uh, as anshu ma'am just shared that knowledge of india will be the focus uh, the scientific temper uh, the third thing is computational thinking the fourth thing is citizenship and the fifth and the important thing is focusing on the 21st century skills and all these things are somehow uh, you know it needs some some sort of innovative mindset uh, to you know uh, to just integrate it with the school and especially higher education institutions so uh, three things are you know in focus right now so the first thing is uh, we are focusing on the school and if you see that uh, i'm just sharing you one detail in uh, you know just to promote the science and especially on the, uh, the things like tech based uh, knowledge and how you know the coding you can also include it so atal innovation mission so it it is working in that direction and if you see the data right now approx 10000 schools they are uh, building a kind of tinkering lab uh, called atal tinkering lab and these schools are uh becoming a, a you know a hub of innovation a, a hub of uh, new ideas and children are using that platform to you know experiment something to solve the real life problems and uh, also they are trying to uh, uh, not only trying to get the uh, you know the basic ideas of innovation but also they are experimenting they are using that platform and very soon we are going to Uh, we are planning to integrate all those atal tinkering lab with the higher education institutions so we are working on it second thing is uh, in school education uh, as you know uh, innovation entrepreneurship things should be uh, should be you know uh, we should create a kind of culture where students can get basic knowledge about them so recently government of india uh, started a school innovation ambassador program and uh, rocks 50000 teachers will be short they are being shortlisted and they are receiving the you know training proper training on the things like this uh, design thinking okay ipr and other things so that they can help the children to you know get the basic thing suppose i am a creative person and i want to uh, initiate something or i am having some idea so i should get some mentorship support i should get some uh, you know theoretical as well as some practical support also from the institution and the uh, the, the the campus where i'm uh, studying uh, the third thing is uh, from this year uh, you you can see the impact that last year uh, government of india has organized one twikathon first time so india is a hub of you know uh, toys but majority of toys they are coming from abroad so so under self reliant india atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan so government of just they have started thinking that we should you know utilize the uh, innovative brain of the uh, children and we should engage with them and you will be sur surprised that you know uh, so many you know, lakhs of children they were they have shown the interest that i want to become a part of due to pandemic uh, you know uh, a kind of digital we had organized only digital hackathon so uh, they have showcased that india is having talent especially talents are there in the school campus they they only need the platform and uh, majority of winners they they are uh, recently uh, they are receiving good response from the toy industry and majority of the toys they have uh, created during the toy hackathon uh, they are receiving a kind of industry support in upcoming months so these things are happening there from this year in smart india hackathon india's largest hackathon so uh, school track which is added and now class 6 to 12 students can participate in it uh, 
they can solve the real life problem of different ministries, different departments, different institutions. So just imagine the class six or seven students, they are solving the problem of uh, one Kerala as you know, maybe Ministry of Fisheries, and they are developing a tech-based solution for them uh, through 36 hours long, uh, you know, coding-based uh, uh, hackathon. So definitely it will, you know, you will see the huge impact in the upcoming years. So other than that, uh, India is also focusing on uh, how we can leverage the, uh, you know, technology to uh, not only ignite the, in, you know, a kind of uh, hidden talent of the children, but also help them to, uh, you know, grow as a, a kind of a very, as a person who, who is more willing to initiate the startup, like uh, Progate, uh, I heard that a 21-year-old person started this platform, right? So, India, you, you will find so many examples in India also that uh, class 9 student, class 10 student, class 11 student, they are having patent. They're having huge, you know, they're they, they trying to uh, convert their ideas into a big startup. And uh, definitely all these things will have a positive impact in upcoming years. So th th this, these are the some initiatives taken by the government. Recently, if you talk about the higher education, recently, you know, government has slashed the uh, patent uh, cost so now if you are the faculty member of any educational institutions and you are filing any patent, so approximately 80%, uh, you know, they are getting subsidy. So you can easily get the patent in very low cost. And if you are a student, so earlier India, before 2017, India was not having any proper national innovation startup policy. So now India is having national innovation startup policy. And I hope very soon we will have a school startup policy also so that uh, it helped the you know, children to get uh, a kind of a ecosystem where, and the whole, whole initiative is just to create the ecosystem, just to create the culture of innovation, just to create the culture of entrepreneurship startup so that uh, everyone should be aware about it and everyone should uh, help any kids or any students to you know, initiate their own startup, be a true self-dependent person and uh, not only contribute to the, uh, Indian economy, but also to solve the pressing issues, especially challenges society is facing right now. So, so I think uh, th these are the things uh, uh, which I mentioned here. Other than that, there are so many uh, initiatives are also taken by the government through different different uh, departments. Uh, if you see the details of the DST and other organization, they are continuously working on promoting innovation. So, so yes. Right, right. Thank you, Mr. Abhishek. Uh, so you mentioned about the Smart India Hackathon 2022. Um, from this year, uh, the school students can also participate. You know, un until last year, only uh, university students can participate. And I saw um, the website, and there, are, I think it was about 200 plus uh, or more ideas or problem statements by the government or the companies. And so, the, as Dr. Anshin mentioned earlier. Uh, the students can tackle those real world problems you know raised by the government and also the companies so i think it might be a really wonderful opportunity for the students to participate in that, such kind of activities but is there like a like a deadline and what kind of schedule are there uh, moving forward for, for the schools to participate what kind of like process are there so registration is already going on uh, anyone can visit the website sih mm -hmm. uh, website and they can enroll Okay, is there like a deadline or something? So we had just recently started it. So we, okay. you know, uh, till April, uh, till March, uh, anyone can okay. register. Right, so until the end of March, uh, all schools can register for Pan yes. India. Okay, yes. wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. So I think, you know, participating in this kind of uh, events by the government or uh, any type of those uh, similar events would enhance and, and, and strengthen the brand of schools. Um, so speaking of like the brands, I think it's a commitment to the public and also uh, building trust with the parents uh, or the people at large. But uh, Dr. Anshin, uh, Ms. Kavita, uh, well, first, Dr. Anshu, would you like to comment anything about creating a brand at your school and uh, the impact of it? So well, what kind of impact it has to the parents or future students? Uh, 
could you just repeat i mean what kind of brand are we talking about so it could be anything but you know joining this type of event could be one way to create the brand or enhance the brand uh okay. it could be anything but uh, is there any like specific feature or characteristics uh, that you are trying or tackling at your school to to strengthen your school's brand yeah i think amity itself is a brand name you know and it's mm -hmm. like a hub of education so to say which has schools mm -hmm. universities across country and across world you know together mm -hmm. and each uh, basically branch of amity does three to four very innovative competitions for the rest of the school which is both amity and outside of amity so we are uh, you know hackathon and other things which mr abhishek has mentioned those are the kind of competitions that amity has been doing for the last 5 6 years so those things are not very new we are happy that they now they are coming to us through more platforms but we were as it is training and teaching children and conducting this level of competitions so be it it be it science mathematics sports we are giving children very very innovative and you know competitive things where they can further you know uh, hone their skills and get better wonderful wonderful all right miss kavita how about your school so uh, to increase our svkm brand what we basically do is we review the curriculum every year and now that we know that ar uh, artificial intelligence augmented reality machine learning virtual reality uh, so spatial learning all this is a things of the future so this is what we have incorporated in our curriculum and every year we review it to make sure that it we are with the world uh obviously to make it a brand you make sure that your teachers or the brand ambassadors of your school are well equipped everything around it so teacher training is one of the most important component and one very important component for us is that industry school mentorship so we believe that our schools should get interned with industries similarly our teachers should get industry interned with industries also because when a teacher is interned maybe with an artificial intelligence industry then she knows what she's taking back and how she's connecting the physics concepts she teaches in class to that respective industries and that makes the learning much more engaging and fruitful for the students so industry uh, teacher mentorship industry student mentorship is what we are developing uh, working on most of it and obviously developing student agency giving them a voice and having them lead the things across so these are a couple of things that we take on year after year to make sure that our brand improves uh, every year wonderful thank you so much i would like to open to uh the audience for the q and a so uh for those who have questions please share them on the chat box and um please state your question first and then add any context uh if necessary but uh, please state the question first uh on your first sentence So I think uh, just to take on the questions that we had earlier. Um, so, okay, uh, but let, let me first take two questions. For, uh, so he is requesting. Uh, Mr. Dike Kumar is requesting uh, to Mr. Abhishek. He is requesting to educate on the government implementation policies for schools in tier two, three cities, and the rural schools as well. So he's like, uh, maybe, what's your thoughts about that? and uh one more question is about uh how do you engage students with us online students online so engagement is a challenge we are tackling at my school it would be great if speakers can share their cases so maybe first question to mr abhishek and the second question to ms kavita and dr anshu thank you so yes, uh, uh, mm -hmm. he's asking you know ki how government is planning to implement policies mm -hmm. for the school especially in the tier 2 mm -hmm. tier 3 cities and rural areas so i'm just sharing two three examples here one program is i i think we all should uh, you know visit that that website you will see a uh, live dashboard uh, there you will find the indicator wise progress so one program is called aspirational district program so in that program uh, 117 district were identified who are you know not up to the mark on uh, certain parameters of education health and other sectors so here government is focusing more on the you know three things the collaboration should be there the convergence of funds should be there uh, different ministries different departments should utilize their funds utilize their human resources so as i worked in that districts one district is 
flood affected districts. So you will find, you know, three to four months the schools were closed and everything, you know, uh, not on, on the track. So in one district, it's a typical tribal district. You will not find a proper network connectivity and other things. So these kind of districts are having some different kind of challenges. And uh, government has identified not only uh, tribal district, but some urban areas are also in especially uh, tier two, tier three, uh, maybe you can count, especially in tier three cities, you can count them. So uh, government is trying to ensure that basic facilities are just, you know, it should be provided there. So like basic, what is basic facilities? So just ensuring that uh, children who are in class three, five, eight, they are having basic, you know, up to uh, the class skills in math, in language. So second thing is providing basic infrastructure. So right now, every district is having some parameters. They have to, uh, you know, compete with each other. Those who are performing well, they are receiving the funds from the NITI. So this initiative is changing uh, the, you know, especially the, uh, the especially the three uh, tier three cities and the rural and tribal areas who are facing some challenges due to some geographical, due to some social, due to some economical issues. The second thing is uh, because, uh, as I said earlier, that uh, in India education is in concurrent list. State government is having more ownership on these schools. Okay. So uh, central government is having a very less say on the education. They can intervene on the policy aspects. And, but still, especially in the last six to seven years, uh, government is pumping so much amount on the schools development. I'm, I'm talking about the government school only. So uh, you will see, you know, first time each schools across India, they are receiving funds uh, for the sports, for the library, for, uh, for you know, for, for the toilets. So you will see, you know, a, a, a world record, you can say keep, uh, India has created uh, almost 100% girls toilet in the government school right now. But five to seven years ago, this situation was not there. So other than that, India is also trying, especially after NEP, you will see some more, more changes. But right now, creating platform like, you know, uh, Shagun. So you will find, so here, you know, uh, government is trying to uh, geotagging all the schools so that uh, they can track the progress, they can uh, see the things, how things are going on the ground. Uh, on administrative part, government has just merged the, you know, Sar Shiksha Abhiyan and uh, Ramsa and teachers education in one category called Samagra Shiksha. So now administrative setup are also, uh, you know, in, in kind of unified and right now, government is also sending amounts to the, you know, minimum 25,000 to uh, 2 lakh rupees to the government school so that they can work on some basic things. Other than that, uh, teachers training, uh, as I said earlier, that this is the huge problem uh, earlier. And just to make sure that uh, each and every teachers are uh, getting appropriate in-service training. So just to ensure that teachers are getting trainings, uh, government has just started an initiative called NISTHA. So approximately 5 million teachers are getting trained through these initiatives. And during pandemic time, uh, this initiative is already going on. And uh, again, uh, th this will also change the system, especially in the uh, tier three cities and rural and tribal areas. So th th these are the some initiatives. One more thing is, uh, uh, which is somehow related with uh, NEP, that focusing on the the regional languages, focusing on mother languages. So uh, due to some, uh, I, I don't know, uh, I'm not uh, want to discuss about these issues, but due to some regions, uh, we always used to you know, uh, focus on the uh, either loans, everything in the English. Uh, I think you, you represent that country who, who progressed through their own mother language, through own mother tongue. But still in India, you will find that majority of system is always encouraged to learn some some alien language some some language which they don't know so uh, focusing on the regional languages focusing on the mother tongue tongue uh, fo fo focusing on the mother language uh, this is the uh, things are going on especially uh, in you know maybe in next one or two years you will find all technical courses in hindi in all technical courses in tamil in malayalam in all indian languages 
so creating platform in different languages this will also help uh, schools or uh, you know you can see the the education system they will get benefited from it so this, this these initiatives are going on and as i said earlier that uh, at part of union government they are having less say on the schools because majority of schools are under state government state governments are also doing uh, they they are trying to solve the problems there yeah? but uh, as far as central government is concerned uh, they are having less say on the other than the policy they are having very less say on the system it's a real okay. thing yeah. All right, wonderful. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, then, Ms. Kavita, could I hear your uh, answer to this question from uh, Shunendra Gupta about how to engage with students online? So, uh, first of all, I would say that uh, the teachers need to be very well prepared for online engagement, and they have to make sure that the teaching pedagogies change every now and then. So, it cannot be that every time they go over the PPT or every time there's sometimes a video or something. They have to be different. They, the teacher, students should be like wondering, what will my teacher bring in next? So that kind of thing is very, very important. Another thing is that after some, uh, the lesson has to be created in such a way that the students have to be responding. So some kind of um, a Google form or an MS quiz or something could be put in after say 10 minutes for them to respond to. So you know where you're leading the class. Also third very important thing is that the videos of the students should be on for you to know where the student is, how the student is, for you to have the interaction. So these things, certain things are very, very important for you to maintain for a student uh, to be online and engaged throughout. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, how about you, Dr. Anshu? I think Ms. Kavita has online. given yes. some very valid points. Mm -hmm. I will just add one or two things more beyond. Uh, it's like, you know, in our campus, just to give you some examples, we start the day with mass PT. Every uh, first class has a school morning assembly. Then there is a culture of doing a class presentation in which there is a hundred person participation of children. We did our sports day online. You know, I think those are the kind of things children really look up uh, forward to and look, you know, look up to. They get fully engaged when they're other aspects of their learning are looked into. Then it's like uh, what Kavita Ma'am just said, like the teacher should always give a child, you know, food for thought. After doing two slides, maybe she should test. On the third slide, she should ask the child to teach the rest. You know, those kind of things really help. Or maybe do a little eye exercise in the middle of the class or to give them a little project at the end of the class. Do them something which will keep them you know, uh, engaged. So a teacher has to keep thinking. We have to be brighter and smarter than children. Children as it is are very smart. So it's a tough battle and we have to constantly innovate, upgrade ourselves. We have to keep learning. We have to see what slackens them, what is, you know, not interesting to them. Where are the children feeling bored? And then rework those areas. Wow, so we have to constantly learn and the progress. Right, okay, thank you so much, thank you. Okay, uh, so thank you for the questions. And uh, let me just ask the final questions to all the panelists. Uh, so about the digital education, what do you think would be the future trend? Uh, what do you think would be happening in, you know, let's say three years time? Um, Dr. Anshu, would you like to start? Uh, you know, digital education is here to stay. Mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm. we have learned in last two years, it has come to us in a tough way. It was not easy. Now that we've got it, it's like our second uh, backbone, so to say. And we are not letting it die down. Now, even if we go back for physical learning, the off-campus studies, we will have this online element happening. You know, just to give you an example, Amity has eight schools in the NCR. And across the country, we have 14 branches. And then there are another seven, eight schools outside of the country. So when we used to do any competition, it was only the eight schools taking part. But because of online platform, all 14 schools are participating. So many competitions will now become online. At least element, certain elements in every competition will continue to stay online. You know, there were times in this country when because of pollution, because of rallies, election, weather, name it, and the schools had to be shut down. 
so now i don't think we are ever worried any time mm. we hear a notification for closing school we have online platform there for us a child is busy with an annual day you still want him to learn some physics math you could always do an evening 5 o'clock you know class so whatever needs to be done on the campus which needs a different level of engagement will continue with more rigor because we have now a very set system with us we can always go back for extra classes evening classes saturday sunday work and we are going to now you know this is going to stay with us now on campus we will not i think see teachers who are not digitally sound earlier we could hire a teacher she doesn't know much of technology we will teach her over a period of time but i think gone is that time now we need people who know it and who are ready to further improvise and up you know upgrade what is already existing in the system so this digital aspect has become a very important you, uh, you know part and parcel of education system and will mm -hmm. stay very prominent mm -hmm. it will be visible in i feel uh, university education all across you know i have been doing course era courses and other courses for last 15 years but it's the last two years that people have now experimented with everything now that they have a taste of it they are not going back wow thank you that's very encouraging and a very strong statement thank you for sharing that uh, thank you then mr abhishek uh, would you like to share your thoughts about this i will start with last line now we have a taste of it so everyone is knows about you know the advantages of the digital education so uh, i think uh, we need to uh, create a kind of balance between online and offline education but it, it it you know you 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 will not see a kind of any narrative in upcoming years that digital education is uh, i think it it is not needed uh, we should not keep it because it has some dis disadvantage in fact everyone will try to uh, create a kind of balance and as i said earlier that government policy is also in that direction that you know removing the blackboard and establishing the digital board so it, it is going to stay here uh, sharing two example here so just to as i said earlier that india is still having some parts which is not connected to the internet facilities so under bharat net project india is spending 19000 crore and the only aim is to just ensure that each and every village of this country should be connected with the internet facility so so you will see a kind of if you just visit any random uh, rural area you will see a kind of center where you will find all the digital related work in one shop so in upcoming years because uh, penetration of network will be available in that area so they will be they can also avail the digital education and it is going to stay here in this country uh, some challenges will be there but uh, i am seeing a huge huge uh you know opportunity for the digital education uh, in in especially a country like india uh, and uh, mm -hmm. definitely it will add value to the education system also yes right right thank you digital education is here to stay and enhance the education great ms kavita yes exactly i i resonate with uh, dr anshu then the learning is here to stay and uh, in mumbai obviously we have a lot of rains so holidays due to rains but now no teacher can say that because of rains school is not on uh, students also cannot say that school is on not offline but online so we are definitely going to be adapting there's no holiday for us anymore in the future that's a sad thing <laughs> oh that's a sad thing well, but you get to educate more <laughs> <laughs> Great, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all your insights. We have learned so much from you. Thank you, Dr. Anshu. Thank you, Ms. Kavita. Thank you, Mr. Abhishek. Thank you so much. Thank right, you. I think you. a wonderful session and I really learned from everyone's views. It was very, very nice session. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very Sita. much. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Back to you, Ankita. Hi, thank you so much. I think it was a really wonderful session. I think we got to know from both private and government perspective today, uh, you know, how we are evolving towards digital education. So thank you so much for your insights and, you know, sharing your experiences, Dr. Anshu, Mr. Abhishek and Ms. Kavita uh, for this today. 
and thank you for the lovely audience uh, who have been there with us uh, till the end and you know you have been asking about your uh, questions and maybe sharing about your your about yourself so it's always good to connect with all of you and uh, i think we have already done the q and a session uh, but to uh, begin to end the session with i really wanted to uh, share with you something you know uh, about digital a bit of digital education it will just take 2 to 3 minutes so uh, you all must be knowing about uh, coding right so learning to uh, write programs stretches your mind and helps you think better creates a way of thinking about things that i think is helpful in all domains so bill gates the co chairman uh, of uh, you know uh, microsoft said this why he said that was because you know he believes that uh, there are many students who can actually you know build their logical skills with coding and that is why it is suggested in the net also to learn how to code from a very younger age and at progate uh, why we believe, uh, we believe in this that you know learning to code changed our lives our ceo started progate at the age of 21 back then when he was 21 years of age so that students who are struggling to learn and get started with their journey can start their journey at a very easy pace and this is the at the heart of everything we do at progate our engineers our team members and everything and programming is a very powerful tool which we believe that every student even though they are from 6 7 classes they can actually you know be able to create something by themselves if they are starting new and we hope that this will actually uh, you know this journey will actually help you uh, get started with your journey and you will be uh, actually you know uh, implementing coding to the schools of yours so uh, for this i would like to introduce you to progate for school which is our initiative where we are giving access to any two programming languages free of cost for an year so that you can experience and your school students can experience from classes 6 to 12 uh the progate platform and understand the power of coding so this way you will as a teacher can get the access to the team dashboard where you can get the uh, you know performance you can track the performance of the students and access to the progate community as well we are also planning project making competitions for the students in the coming days uh, on a small scale with all the schools so i hope uh, all of you will be participating in that and i would love to see all the students creating projects in the coming days so if you are interested to uh, actually get started with your journey uh, you can register to this form it's uh, also provided in the chats right now and uh, we would love to collaborate with your school provide the best learning uh, which we can start from the the self paced learning for the students in your school and uh, thank you so much for joining again all of all of you uh, in this saturday evening uh, have a good weekend and thank you again goodbye thank you ankita thank you so much thank you thank you bye everyone please uh, do not forget to fill up this form before you leave so that we can get in touch with you for the initiative thank you goodbye